Welcome back to the Forensic Crackers. This video will be talking about cement, mortar and concrete, which is kind of new topic. Firstly, cement. In the year 1824, Joseph Asperlin has given the name Portland Cement, which is the most common cement that we are using to build our home. And this is considered to be the ordinary cement. The composition of this cement is lime. They are like lime of 60 to 67%, silica, 17 to 25%, alumina 3 to 8%, iron oxide of 0. 0.5 to 6%, then magnesia 0. 0.1 to 4%, soda and potash of 0. 0.2 to 1%. So you can just remember the ingredients that they add and approximately you can remember these percentages which they may ask like the composition or what is the percentage of lime that has been added to the Portland cement. So these formulas are just for your understanding and then main ingredients the of cement if you say cement except this portland and all what do we add dicalcium silicate 30 percent tricalcium silicate 40 percent tricalcium aluminate and tetracalcium aluminophorite of 11 percent so why we have to generally know these percentages this is to know whether the cement is good quality or adulterated if suppose the silica is of this range or nearer to this it's fine but if in a sample we get of 50 percent silica then we consider it to be adulterated there won't be a good structure or construction that is being made the building may collapse so next we will talk about cement types firstly talking about the rapid hardening of cement here i have mentioned the major ones major types of cement that the rapid hardening cement is where we Add uh, comparing to that of the Portland cement, the, there is high concentration of tricalcium silicate. What is actual ratio? It is of 30%, but we add more in this. This is done in order for quick constructions, where in place like in public places like pavements and all, we need quick uh, hardening of the cement. So, in these cases, we will take up this cement. Next, quick setting cement. This is also the similar kind, but it is it sets quickly. The settling time is very quick. Where this is done by using aluminum sulfate. This is added so that this increases the hydration rate of silica. So this increases the silica's capability to absorb water more and more. So the these kinds of cements are used in cases like uh, submerged or underwater constructions. Like during rainy season, we need to construct. So these cases, we use this cement. Next, we will go to sulfur resisting cement. Where here, we have the concentration of tricalcium aluminate to be lower. Because, if suppose the sulfur resisting itself indicates that uh, the cement usually has this tricalcium aluminate, which usually reacts with sulfur and gives rise to sulfur aluminates starts corrosing the cement and ultimately spoiling the construction or collapsing the building so as uh, these kinds of cement are being made in cases where there is more sulfur content like underwater water sewage treatment or making pipelines are, are usually on in the seashore areas we make constructions for or the surface of tidal zones so these cases we will be using sulfur resisting cement next we'll go to white portland cement so this white portland cement uh, the name itself tells you giving you the white color usually it is greenish gray color ordinary cement this is why how do you get this white uh, cement is by decreasing the proportion of iron oxide or manganese oxide so that this makes it white and this is usually used in decorative purposes or making uh, in swimming pools or for traffic barriers we use this kind of cement next waterproof cements small portion of calcium stearate or non saponifiable oil are used during the graining stage itself so that it has a thin film that is made over that so that it resists the water the other thing you can call it to be an hydrophobic cement where this is an water repellent film that forming substances like which repels the water those kinds of substances are added like fatty acids you can take the example of oleic acid and stearic acids 
this decreases why do we make these kinds of cement so that this would decrease the degradation during the transport condition so during transport conditions we can't expect a similar kind of temperature pozzolanic cement the name itself tells you that along with the portland cement ordinary cement they add pozzolanic materials that is the brick powder the fly ashes these kind of materials are added in order to make it paste like to make usually to make plaster materials they use the cement to decrease the water to cement ratio we be going to the cement analysis firstly we're talking about the field test usually the color of the cement is greenish gray and this greenish color is because of the presence of the iron oxide the adulterants suppose if there are adulterants how can we depict by color the people use ragstone it resembles a kind of bluish gray whereas if it is furnace ashes are added more than it shows you medium to gritty gray if it is a slag then it is like light gray desert sand we usually have like more numbers this sand then we have this very wild red to yellow color river bed sand then we find some kind of clay particles claim impurities too and kind of saturated yellow color so this is how we can even depict the adulteration by the color nextly uh, like field test you can uh, also feel uh, like if you touch the cement you have a cool feeling and you have a smooth feeling like face powder so it is so smooth and cool then it is good quality then if it is having uh, the presence of lumps then you should avoid the cement if you have lumps that are formed it means that there is more uh, moisture content it, the cement is having more moisture content and it is not fit to take for construction next consistency test here is to know whether the cement is good and consistent by using vcat apparatus this is used to find the moisture content then fineness if the cement is finer then it is having the more surface area you know as the uh, particles are smaller you have more surface area next uh, we talk about chemical analysis first and foremostly we'll see about time of thalen test this is a test where time of thalen is used as an acid base indicator usually the color ranges from colorless to blue that is in acidic condition it is colorless and in basic it is blue the cement the cement is usually alkaline it is of 12 to 13 ph it has so obviously you get a blue color if suppose if there is any presence of stone powder that acts as an adulteration then this remains colorless only so even by this we can understand the adulteration next we'll go to acid insoluble test where uh, it is based on the proportion of sample is there how many of them are not hydrolyzed by sulfuric acid this is usually done uh, to know the silica percentage or also to know the ferric oxide and alumina ratios it is like uh, if silica's percentage is actually 20% of overall cement and if the if the sample has near to 20% it's fine if it is more like 50% then it is considered to be adulterated determination of calcium by edta titration this question they have asked previous question previous year paper so in this thing uh, we use a indicator called pattern readers indicator which changes the color from pink or red to blue once you form the calcium edta then it gives your blue color and this tells us what does the titration give you the amount of calcium that is present so if it is 60% of the total cement concentration that is fine if it is more or very less then it is adulterated heating test this is where approximately 1 g of the sample is taken on a steel plate and it is heated for 20 minutes and if suppose there is a change in the color of the cement usually the color of the cement is greenish gray if there is any change then it is adulterated if there is no change it is considered to be a good quality cement you can also do instrumental analysis of cement because these cement contains the trace elements too so like this is done by icp aes it is induced coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy and xrd x-ray diffraction 
this identifies the uh, phase of the crystal elements so next coming to the concrete and mortar till now we have been discussing about cement what is the difference between concrete and mortar concrete is where there is the ratio of cement sand water and the aggregates aggregates are like crushed stones or fly ashes and all whereas mortar is uh, for uh, the ratio of cement to that of the sand one is to four ratio this is mortar is usually thicker it's a thicker paste is made whereas concrete is usually thinner than mortar well mortar analysis well, why do we use this mortar to act as a glue for bricks see once they place the brick upon that they place some kind of cement so that is called mortar whereas uh, this mortar is also tested by using the weight composition test as we have seen silica percentage set test and edta titration the same one then if it is concrete uh, analysis concrete why do we use concrete is to make foundation we might have known concrete slabs and all we use this concrete and this is tested by the weight composition test silica percentage test edta is not used because the calcium content in this will be comparatively very little right so we don't have to know the con calcium concentration so this is all about the cement concrete mortar i have uh, put of most important points till here thank you for watching the video kindly like share and subscribe for more and more videos